What's going on everybody? Grady here for another video and today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the Vostok Amphibia and we're really going to be answering one simple question with this thing. Should this Soviet era icon be in your collection? Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look. So first things first I want to go over is some dimensions. So we're looking at here is a 41 millimeter case diameter, a 15 millimeter case thickness and a lot of that is really to do with the acrylic and I'll show you what it looks like on wrist here in a minute. Uh, it also has a very unique 18 millimeter lug width so you know strap changes might be a little bit difficult but you know at the end of the day I really don't mind this silicone here. Uh, flipping the watch over you do find a screw down case back but it is a very different kind of screw down case back which if we're going to talk more about all of this in a minute, uh, this watch has lots of very interesting decisions on the way it was designed. So most traditional case backs, right, this entire piece rotates out. But for the Vostok Amphibia, it actually is a ring that you can see here that unscrews. And then this plate actually comes off separately. So it's two different pieces. And beneath that, you're going to find the Vostok in-house movement model 2415.01 uh, which is a total workhorse movement minus 20 to plus 60 seconds per day it is not supposed to be the most accurate thing in the world it is simply a true workhorse movement with a service interval of 10 years which i find to be absolutely incredible um, Looking over here, since this watch does feature 200 meters of water resistance, you are going to find a screw down crown, but not just any screw down crown. You're going to find a screw down crown that all of a sudden you think you broke it because now it's hanging off to the side and shaking all over the place, but that's actually by design. So that's if something were to happen to this watch and you hit the crown here on the side, it will actually disconnect from the rest of the movement so it doesn't break the stem and basically trash that portion of the movement, which is a very unique design, considering especially because there's not very big crown guards, as you can see here. Um, another interesting thing is the bezel. So as you can see, this watch is high polished completely, like kind of like old Breitlings, which I find very cool. But when you go to grip that bezel, which is a little bit tricky, you can see here it goes both directions. Uh, if you know anything about dive watches, they usually are unidirectional, not bidirectional, and there's usually a clicking sound. But in this case, it's all based on pressure. So the watch, they say, is by having that is adequate to keep it in place. I mean, if you don't touch it, but you think maybe you bang into it, it would cause it to rotate, but you just press it down a little bit and twist, and there you go. So that's a really interesting decision once again, um, but this watch just has left me so fascinated by all the different things they've done from the blue seconds hand to the light blue here on the markers um, to even really interesting things like the little pips uh, where they illuminate at night which is just very simple very handsome here taking a closer look at the dial you know it's just this nice deep black uh, with a kind of off white indices like i said with the blue seconds hand you'll see amphibia here on the top 31 jewels right there and made in Russia right there. So a very, very unique watch. Definitely something that the fact that it's not really set for the American market or the English speaking market uh, makes it a kind of a unique piece every time you put it on. And something that I've always really loved the last couple months I've owned this thing. And speaking of owning it, uh, I purchased this for a little less than $100 US, which is a little bit more than you know what some people will pay. Uh, you can usually get these around $75, $80, but I was able to purchase it within the United States, so I didn't have to wait weeks and weeks uh, to get it over to us here in the States. So, you know, you can take what you can in terms of that respect. Um, but this watch really does have a cult following. It was something that was issued out in, back in 1967 during the Soviet era, which is one of the most fascinating times in military history, in my opinion, at least. And it served its purpose, and it continues to serve its purpose. It is a very unique watch that has a lot of very unique design language as well as engineering language like such as things like the case that as the pressure increases it actually compresses 
the watch so it gets more and more watertight as you go deeper down, which is just one of these very unique things that this watch is known for, as well as things like its polished case, its acrylic crystal. It is technically inferior to most watches that you will buy at this price point, um, but it is simply just fun. You throw it on wrist like I am right now here with my seven and a half inch wrist. Once again, this is a 41 millimeter case. And you know, overall, it's a comfortable watch. It's a really, really nice watch to wear. The silicone strap is really comfortable. You know, it fits me well. You know, you can definitely see here that acrylic crystal does sit quite high, but the rest of the case actually is quite slim. So you can definitely look at putting this under the shirt cuff, you know, I don't say you want to dress it up per se, but you know, the fact that it is a high polished watch definitely leaves some opportunity to dress it up if you can. And you know, there's a lot of great strap options you could look, you know, from different companies because it is, as you can see here, just a straight cut uh, lugs. So that's really easy for that. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it's a fun watch. It's not taking itself too seriously. It's just cool to look at as well and with a lot of great history. And I think for something like this, you're just starting to get on watches or, you know, you're like myself and have a big collection. This is just unique and fun. And every time I put it on, I, I wind it up and I forget that the crown is will disconnect and I think I broke it again. Um, I throw it on. It's comfortable. It looks cool. And it has history, and I'm definitely a huge history buff. So why don't we hop back to the desk? All right, so that is a quick overview of the Vostok Amphibia. You know, answering our question here in terms of is this something that you should have in the collection, you know, I personally say so. I recognize I might be a little biased because I own one, but I think that for anybody that has interest in some of these peculiar unique type of watches that not necessarily all about the specs because really this thing isn't particularly record-breaking in terms of what it's able to do however it's fun it's interesting the high polished case to the acrylic crystal to the really unusual crown i mean this just is something that for watch people you see someone with this on and you might want to have a conversation with them. So thank you again so much for tuning in. Hope each and every one of you have a great rest of your day. And hey, stay awesome.